Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, situation, of course, growing more and more desperate in the Middle East. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I'm just, I'm not, I'm finding myself by the grace of God, not always alone in some of these opinions that I have. Um, I realize that some of these men definitely do not have the best reputation that Israel has killed recently. Um, one in particular up in Beirut, as I reported about that. But of course, sadly, a mother and her two children lost their lives in Israel's Beirut strike. Uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit later here. But uh, then Israel then makes this strike here uh, on uh, on uh, this man here. In it, while he's there to attend the presidential inauguration in Iran, the head leader of Hamas, uh, he comes there to attend that meeting, and uh, and then he's killed, uh, just just taken out like no big deal, and uh, you know, and and yet he's the one of the very negotiators for the peace agreement. Uh, between Israel and Hamas on releasing the Israeli hostages, which let me remind you that Israel knew that 200 to 250 hostages were going to be taken two weeks before the attack, if you remember that report there, right? So just very, very, very sinister uh, what we see happening there. This, of course, was the attack in uh, Beirut. Uh, and uh, this, let's see if I got that right here. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, Beirut bombings. Looks like Israel has attacked Beirut breaking. Okay, that will, of course, uh, and we'll kind of, uh, and again, like I said, they used a large enough explosive there where it actually caused enough damage where it killed innocent people as well. And that can be expected. Now, the man that was killed in Beirut, uh, he was actually a senior Hezbollah leader and, um, and was wanted, I uh, actually had, I think, a $5 million uh, bounty on his, boy, I tell you what, they are so bad about putting all the garbage on my computer while I try to do the broadcast here. I probably just exited out of something I wanted to share with you, but nonetheless, uh, uh, he was wanted as the, uh, by America for the Beirut blast that killed uh, uh, hundreds of our U.S. soldiers there. Uh, also, too, I wanted to share with you here, this was on Sputnik News. This is a former CIA officer here that weighed in on the assassination of uh, Hania, who was killed there in Iran. He was He's the Hamas leader there that was assassinated. And like I said, it it's reminds me very much of Israel striking the embassy of Iran inside of Syria. So I don't see Iran letting this one going, going, laying down. Let's listen to the former CIA operative there uh, weighing in on uh, Ishmael uh, Hania. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly there, the leader of Hamas. Word has just come in that uh, Ishmael Hania, the leader of Hamas, was assassinated, murdered uh, in Tehran. He was there to attend the inauguration of the new Iranian president. This coincides with the uh, assassination as well of a senior Hezbollah official earlier today in Beirut. Israel is justifying these attacks uh, by you know, claiming that the Golan Heights was attacked by Hezbollah the other day and has been long after Hania for his position within Hamas. Uh, this action clearly had the support and foreknowledge of the United States and the United Kingdom. And I say that because we also have reports, news reports now coming in, that the U.S. and U.K. warships are headed into the Mediterranean. Uh, on one of the U.S. ships is uh, uh, probably a Marine amphibious unit, uh, a MU, an expeditionary unit. Uh, so that uh, this is now... Uh, escalated tensions in the region beyond what they were even after the, uh, the attack on the Iranian consul uh, in April in Beirut. Uh, I think 
I think he's actually referring to the same one I was talking about, the, uh, the consulate, the Iranian consulate in Syria. Uh, I think he just misspoke on that right there uh, that took place there. Uh, but nonetheless, though, the thing is, Israel keeps doing things. And, and, and it's to me, it's almost obvious that Israel is provoking the situation. They're trying to bring about an all-out war. After all, the way that uh, we've been reading in our Bibles, especially the Ezekiel War, uh, often referred to the Ezekiel War of Ezekiel 37, 38, can't actually materialize unless they make it materialize or unless maybe it was fulfilled. A lot of things we have to look at there. And uh, so we're going to be going, in fact, I'll I'll be doing a special broadcast on Ezekiel on uh, on our Patreon channel here. Uh, if I don't get it done by this evening, I will have it done by tomorrow evening. In fact, don't forget tomorrow evening, uh, Thursday night, uh, we have our special teaching, our biblical teaching at Steve, uh, excuse me, StephenBenoon.com, and you can always join over there live. It's a Zoom meeting. With, we have space for 500 people uh, that can attend. We never have that many, so you're always welcome. www.steven, S-T-E-V-E-N, Benun, B-E-N-N-U-N.com. And uh, pray for me, too, about this book I'm writing right now. It'll be my third book. It was supposed to be the fourth book, but the third book is not done yet either. Uh, so... Anyway, uh, let me let me let's let's continue on though with this uh, uh, this here. Why Israel's attack on? Oh, this was the Iranian consulate here that was attacked there inside of Syria. And like I said, I believe this is what he was referring to there. And I think that was back in April when that happened uh, three months ago there. So. Um, Anyway, Ron Paul, uh, actually, th this is Daniel McAdams right here. Daniel's been on our program a couple of times, uh, maybe about three times by now. I'd like for you to listen a little bit about what, what Daniel had to say, let's see here, uh, about this, these two assassinations there. Him and Ron Paul were together on the Ron Paul broadcast there. Let me see if I can get it to work here. Internet's a little bit slow where I'm at. Um, hmm. Maybe if I drop some of these other sites, it'll pick up here. I don't know why that one's actually not wanting to run very well. Sometimes, though. Um, and by the way, too, another thing that comes to my mind, I do want to play this, too. Uh, with the Colonel, uh, Colonel uh, McGregor, very interesting comments he normally has to say. Um, you know, we'll come back to, let me just try first refreshing the page. Sometimes that's all it takes. The, the animosity and the hatred to support the government uh, who have the assassinated uh, the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Forces in Damascus, in Syria. So in roughly 24 hours, Israel has bombed Lebanon, Iran, and Syria. So they're, they're definitely taking advantage of the fact that there is no U.S. administration to do anything about it. And they have admitted it. The U.S. administration is, is AWOL. Put up this next clip. Uh, there's a couple of journalists have commented on this. Now here's Michael Young, a journalist uh, from the region saying an incredible quote, quote by Blinken, quote, this is about the killing uh, of the Hamas leader in Tehran. Blinken says, the Secretary of State of the United States, Dr. Paul says, this is something we were not aware of or involved in. It's very hard to speculate, end quote. And the, Michael Young commented, he wasn't aware of a killing that could undermine the prime U.S. aim of avoiding a regional war? Breathtaking incompetence is on display, is what this one journalist says. You know, some people were pointing this out in a very immediate reaction, and who who really won politically? And it looks like you know Yahoo did. He came over here, and he he had the American Congress groveling at, at his feet, promising to get the money and the weapons that they need. And, uh, and then, uh, then they went over, and uh, in order to assist, uh, you know, at least a pretense of a victory, 
by, by expanding the war is what they're doing. One thing I will say, too, that Ron Paul's not mentioning here is that Israel, when Netanyahu went to speak before Congress, all the Senate came over to listen to him as well. Israel has our government at their beck and call. That is, by the way, prophecy. That is biblical prophecy right there. You want some biblical prophecy? That is biblical prophecy. Uh, I'm going to continue to teach on these things, and I don't know for sure. Maybe I'll even go into that Thursday night. But this other broadcast I'm going to be doing on Patreon about Ezekiel, though, you definitely want to check out. Um, uh, Yana is supposed to be on with me tomorrow. We're going to be hitting the seven Noahide laws, a very serious situation. And I'm going to be taking that from the angle, mainly from the angle that um, that this is the scripture being fulfilled. It would be so deceiving that even the elect could be deceived. Um, that's what I'm seeing really, really right before our eyes right now. Uh, let's listen to Douglas McGregor here, uh, Judging Freedom podcast there. Uh, very interesting right here with uh, Judge Napolitano. Listen to this here. The chopping off the heads, <clears throat> metaphorically, uh, of Hamas and Hezbollah. Well, the IDF hasn't directly taken uh, credit for the assassination uh, in Beirut and the assassination in Tehran. It's obvious that they did this because they're boasting about it. How can a mediation aimed at a ceasefire succeed when one side murders the chief negotiator on the other side? Amen. The simple answer is it cannot. And I don't think that's accidental because I don't see much evidence that Mr. Netanyahu and his government are interested in peace of any kind. They're they're interested right now in exploiting what they consider to be their strategic superiority that uh, results in large part from the unconditional backing they presumably are going to get from us. Does he have to do? Does the IDF have strategic superiority? Even if uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Donald Trump said, "Don't worry, we're with you." Yeah, I think so. Uh, first of all, there's nobody else in the region that really has an air force that can possibly match the Israelis in terms of either technology or performance. Uh, you'd have to turn to European states, uh, Russia, per perhaps China. I, I don't think the Turkish air force is in the same category. But as we both know, uh, there has been a paradigm shift in warfare. We live in the age of missiles and uh, precision strike and ISR dominance overhead and uh, around the world. Those things are not necessarily entirely in Israeli hands. They certainly have no monopoly on it. So I think uh, it's dangerous. There we go right there, what uh, Colonel Douglas uh, McGregor is saying there. And that does bring me back to the issue I shared with you the other day about the dangers of uh, real EMP threats right now. Hezbollah threatening to use an EMP strike on Israel. Uh, and keep in mind, those of you that are in that region of the world, EMP Shield does deliver over there. Uh, we did finish our little uh, behind the scenes. It's about a 35-minute 35, 35 uh, inside look into the EMP Shield company, their uh, amazing technology, the scientists behind it, the president of the company, the vice president uh, also, uh, just, you know, a lot of wonderful friends there that helped us to, to bring this together. And uh, we, of course, it was our negligence for being so long in putting that together. But uh, you'll definitely, once you see that film there, you will see why it's so important to have an EMP shield. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you decide uh, to do that for your family, especially in the times that we're living in, go to EMPShield.com. And uh, when you click on there, when you go to shop, uh, one thing you're going to learn in the video when we release that, we're waiting for EMP Shield to give us the green light on that. They've already received it, acknowledged it, they're reviewing it. I know they're reviewing it because we can see the views on it. Uh, but one thing you will definitely learn, and that is, even though they have so many products here, like for your home, your vehicle, solar and wind and things like that, uh, one thing that's important to understand is that there is a reason for all these different products. Um, you know, just like in the case of solar panels here, you need an EMP shield for each one of those phases there. 
Uh, in fact, the vice president of the company it lives off grid. 100% he lives off grid and he has the solar system and the EMP shields in between every one of those. Uh, the president of the company, Mr. Keegan, explains in there why you need one separate for your, excuse me, your ham radio. Uh, so, you know, I'm just saying this to you, not, and again, it's just like with LifeWave. These are two things that I really believe in. It's not a matter to try to talk into buying anything. If you didn't buy it, you know, it's not going to hurt my feelings either way. But I do believe it may help you. And even in the case of storms, we're having storms like never before. Uh, just the strangest lightning that you could have going on. And they have, that. it's the fastest surge protector system in the world. Uh, so besides EMP, also, you know, and by the way, it doesn't. God bless this precious sister. She wrote my wife. She said, I bought an EMP shield two years ago and the power went off in my house. How do I get a refund? <laughs> so, all right, sis, God bless you if you're listening tonight. And I'm going to say this just in case you are listening. It doesn't stop the power from going off. Uh, it only protects your home and the appliances and your TV and your, your stove, your refrigerator, anything that's electrical in your house, it prevents that lightning from coming in and destroying those objects. That's, it's like, it's like a, a, a box in between it all. Your power can still go out. Yeah, that's, that's definitely so. But EMP Shield does work with other infrastructure, and I don't really, I didn't mean to get off on this on a long tangent. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget Patreon.com. Uh, I've loaded two videos here in the last uh, couple of days on Patreon. You want to check those out. I'm working on one right uh, after I get out of here on Ezekiel and comparing the situation going on in Israel right now. You need to know what the truth is because I'm tired of people tickling your ears. There's other guys out there, girls as well, telling you the truth. Oh, I'm trying my best to get you uh, armed and ready to know what's really true. Because one day we got to get out of here. I don't care to stay in this realm forever. God bless you. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.